What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. Hopefully you guys are enjoying NFL Sunday. I'm doing a lot better. I know a lot of people reached out and everything. Uh, so we'll be back to regular, uh, I guess you could say, scheduled videos per week. Um, PSA coming in tomorrow. I should have two different orders in. So I'll, I don't know if I'm going to do that in one video or maybe two. But be on the lookout for that. And then overtime this Friday. Overtime this Friday. I had to think about what, what, what week I was in right now. I uh, hit the card show yesterday, and it's going to be kind of a topic into this here. Is I only picked up one card. It was No.J. Simpson Rookie Raw. Uh, that will be going SGC. And depending on where it grades at, as long as it meets what I want as a minimum grade, it'll be part of the uh, Gridiron Giveaway. If you guys want to see a picture of it, pop over Discord's under Mail Day. But while I was at the card show, there was an older gentleman that had a whole display case. It's called these cards reprints. Remember, the word reprint needs to be used correctly. A reprint is something that the company that's the original manufacturer makes again with a different copyright date on. So, example, you had the Jordan rookie cards, and then they came out, was it 15, 20 years later? I, I don't know the exact date. They had the decades of um, excellence, but they put a stamp on it just to help even, you know, deter a little bit more, you know, from looking like the original card, but there was a different copyright date on it. Same goes with what Topps has been doing. You know, they'll have buybacks and all this other stuff, but a reprint has to come from that manufacturer or somebody that the manufacturer or licensed it to with a new copyright date onto it. I believe I said that right. So, by me going out and making a photocopy of a Nolan Ryan rookie card off my printer or whatever it may be, that is not a reprint. That's a counterfeit. I have no licensing to it. The gentleman that uh, was older up there had like Jordan autographs and stuff like that there. I can tell you now there's a lot of cases with the FBI on this stuff. Um, but that's about all I can, uh, I guess, divulge or say at this time frame. There is a lot going on with this stuff out there. And I just want to show this. I know it's kind of a good news story for once. But this guy here has been doing what they, he considered a reprint of the card, which is actually a counterfeit of the card since 1992. This article here came to me by Sports Collectors Daily. It actually busted out about a week ago now. Michigan man to be sentenced for card fraud scheme. I'm going to go ahead and put the link down there if you guys want to read the whole thing. But... Basically, he was selling resealed wax packs recently, you know, with the Jordan Gretzky cards and all that stuff into it. So, as we go down here, he was indicted on eight counts of wire fraud in March of 22, pleaded guilty to the charges in May in Michigan. This is all public knowledge stuff. Federal prosecutors, this is the guy's last name. You guys can see it somewhere in here. Right there, Brian Kennert. Uh, buying packs of baseball cards that he knew were resealed and selling them as originals from April 2019 to July 2021. Huh, right during COVID. He obtained loose cards that he repackaged, resealed, according to federal indictment. There, like I said, it had uh, some of these repack things that he was doing, Ruth, Jordan, Gretzky. You can get the whole thing on to it. What I know, I know Steve Hart's in this too. I, I knew there was another thing. Steve Hart helped uh, uncover the fraud, they said. But, sorry, I mean, his stuff's been shaky here in the uh, last year, we'll say. So, with that, he faces up to 20 years right now in federal prison on each count of wire fraud. So, if it's 20 years on uh, prison for eight accounts. To me, it's 160 years. So I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just reading and doing math in my head. But there's a pattern here. You talk about the FBI agent. I'm sure you guys can probably Google if you guys want to send them tips on stuff. But trust me, they got to build a huge case before they go in. There's a lot with uh, sports cards have been linked with art through their 
fraud and stuff like that. Just so everybody's tracking. I think it talked about, yeah, here. Fraud involving sports cards and art. They kind of categorize it the same, but I guess because it's a picture. Where is it here? There's more in here. Okay, so in 92, I remember this story here. I would have been, I want to say, a sophomore in high school. And a couple of the older guys used to set up the shows and stuff. I can never, I'll never forget, it was at the Sheraton Mall. And they were talking about this. And basically, this guy, this kid was in college. And I think it says it in here. Yeah, here is dormitory room. And he was selling 87 Fleer Will Clark rookie cards. Now, everybody know a lot of people like, who's Will Clark? You know, some people wouldn't have realized, you know, these were probably a couple bucks a piece back then. Two, three bucks, maybe. Nothing like how they would be, you know. We got to remember Griffey's were at one time, you know, a predict you're getting them for like 10, 20 bucks. But he was making, they found in his door. The catch to this here is that when they did all this, they hit his roommate. His roommate's family was like from Japan. If I, I think it's in here. Yep, here, oh, Hong Kong. And his dad had a printing press where he was making the copies at. In 2014, same guy accused of trying to auction a box of 69 Tops baseball cards that had been opened and resealed according to court records. A lot of strikes on this guy. And this is the one that's kind of with the recent stuff here. In 2019, uh, these people here were shopping for baseball cards, but they sell cards in Kenner's booth. I guess this guy owned one of those like boutique booth type steals. Because uh, an antique mall had stuff in there. Over the next six months, they spent over 43000 what they thought were vintage card packs. After buying some of the facts, they noticed that uh, they appeared to be re-glued. A Jordan rookie uh, discovered one of the packs was too large to fit into a standard top loader. The first thing is, when you say it's too large, I don't think they're meaning left and right and up and down. I think they're talking about the thickness of the card where we have like 35, 55, 75, all those different points. I think that is what they're talking about because if you got an extra large card that's like bulging out of a pack, you know, that measures instead of like whatever the regular measurement says, it's like an eighth of an inch taller, an eighth of an inch wider, I think you're going to be able to pick that out. I think what they're talking about here was the width. Or the thickness, however you want to call it on there. But anyhow, they met with Steve Hart. He looked at them and said that they were re-glued, tampered, and resealed. Keep going on here. Basically, investigators raided his home in North Shores, Michigan. and seized 10 boxes of sports cards memorabilia, a bag of counterfeit cards, and framed baseball cards according to search warrant inventory. Counterfeit cards seized included attempts at creating a T206 card of Ty Cobb. A 1957 to uh, Topps rookie card of Bill Russell. 1963 Topps rookie card of Pete Rose. 11 rookie cards of NHL grade Bobby Orr. 11 cards of Jordan from the 86-87 Fleer set. 45 OPG Gretzky rookies. 1914 Cracker Jack card of Shoeless Joe Jackson. I know packs of 51-52 Topps baseball. A33 Gowdy. Carter Ruth, a 54 top rookie of Hank Aaron, and a 1911 gold border cob. <laughs> counterfeit card seized. That's what they, he had counterfeited. In addition to the bogus near mint Ruth rookie, investigators found three of the same card in lower grades. But it goes into a lot onto this here. It's it, it, They're getting busted now. I know we've talked about this stuff um, during overtimes and in different discussions and stuff. It, they have to build cases. It's not one of those quick shotgun methods, I mean, to where they're just going to go grab somebody up in that. This here is a perfect example that this guy has a lot of huge past with him. And with all this stuff, it's documented the amount of money that has to be, you know, in there too. What would I say over forty-three thousand uh, dollars from the one group there that was buying those packs and everything.
But this guy will get his sentencing here in about, what, three weeks roughly from today. So kind of good news for the hobby itself. There is a lot of people who are getting hit and um, with the legal part aspect of it. You gotta remember there was the card that uh they did this sting operation, I think that was in Ohio, and that guy tried to do some uh mail thievery. There's been a few things now, the counterfeit autographs that they got busted for. In fact, there's even a YouTuber got busted for the uh unauthorized licensing photocopies of uh I guess you call them like event photos, player photos, stuff like that. There's a lot of stuff that's gone on. And over time, once the FBI builds your case, goodbye. So kudos to them. They got this guy busted. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot more that are out there. They're probably thinking, oh, they can do it better and everything. You ain't. You're going to get caught. <laughs> You're going to get caught eventually. There's a lot of people been around for a long time. And as I said, there's a lot of people who just enough, have had enough with this already with all this fake stuff. And just like I said, the card show, that guy with the reprints. Uh, you know, that's the hardest thing trying to tell somebody. We're like, it's a reprint. No, it's not. That's not a reprint. Look at the definition of a reprint. Look at the definition of a counterfeit card. That's not a reprint. Upper Deck did not license reprints of that card. It, it, honestly, you can go to jail for that stuff. You really could. Upper Deck could hit you with trademark and uh, stuff onto you and sue you. I'm sure the NBA, likenesses of Jordan, all that stuff's on there. Uh, I know there was another topic out there with uh, other people that are making cut autograph cards now out there. You know, uh, to me, I stay away from it because that's way too much into the very, very dark, dark gray area. Uh, you're going to get in trouble for that stuff down the road. All right, guys. Wanted to share this. Link will be in the description down there. Like I said, just first time back really doing a video now in a couple days. Um, I know I had a couple pop out that might have been short clips and stuff. So bear with me while I get back in the groove of things here. Like I said, I got PSA coming in tomorrow. Should be two orders. I might just split them up. Uh, two different videos onto that. But right now, everybody, don't forget overtime this Friday. And if you're going to the Indianapolis Monster Show, I will be up there Friday, noon to about close, seven ish. So hit me up. You can always catch me on Discord or whatever means up there. Um, link up, maybe we can go walk around, go look at some cars, do some trading on the bleachers, whatever it may be. But right now, guys, take care. Have a great Sunday. Catch y'all next video.